Hey guys, in this video, I would like to talk about some injury prevention, injury treatment, especially some examples and my personal experience working with someone who is, let's say, in their mid, late 60s, 70s, and so on. So very common would be stiffness and pain in the shoulder, in the knee or hip, for example. So all the major joints that we tend to have issues with Obviously, one of the reasons as one of the reason is that these joints will take the most pressure because when we walk, it's our knees, ankles, hips taking a lot of pressure from the leg work. And so this is something which I came to conclusion with observation and you know a little bit of case case studies. So one of the thing is that when people feel pain in their knee and they try to go to the doctor and they only get painkillers or some sort of uh, anti-inflammatories, it's not really solving their deep issues, which could be tightness in the muscles, it could be the muscular imbalances, it could be the fact that they're uh, sedentary. So what I have found out that when we start exercising, so you see, I'm not pretending I know everything, and so, therefore, when I'm actually trying to help someone, I'm trying to throw a net of uh, methods. So, basically, if I would pinpoint one method and I will fail, my whole approach will fail. So, if I choose, let's say, five different uh, things, different specific things, uh, let's say, mobility, increase of active range of motion, for example then strengthening. Uh, if somebody wasn't really exercising and their muscles became very, very weak, you can see it. I, I, I checked so many people and I've noticed sometimes they waste their muscles to the point where there's not much to support the joint itself. For example, another method will be releasing tensions, let's say foam rolling, physio balls, massage, massage gun. All, all of these uh, are just physical release where you press on a trigger point or you find a tight muscle and you try to release it and that helps circulation and circulation fixes the muscle's functionality. So what I found out that if I will throw a method that is compiled of a couple of different approaches, there's always something that works. And sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's only a week and already people are like, oh, my shoulder feels better. I can sleep now on it. And, you know, it's a, it's a huge improvement for them. It makes me feel good that I actually I got something right. I helped them with something, which obviously it took me years to start to understand. And I came through a lot of injuries myself and aches and pains. And, you know, I, I think I, I've got a lot of experience dealing with it. So when I see something works, it just confirms something that I've been studying and also experimenting with. And I see the positive effect. So, for example, what I would do, let's say, for someone who has a problem with their shoulder, and if it is some sort of rotator cuff related, if it's some sort of inflammation in the tendons due to muscular tension and the whole area imbalance. So, usually I just uh, give someone to warm up, let's say. Uh, very easy, where we are lifting arms and we're coming down with some sort of bent over uh, sort of yoga style. Uh, or Tai Chi style, where we just flow, breathe, and move. It's very simple, but if you do this in the morning, you're basically activating your muscles and you're getting yourself ready for the day. In the session, after that warm-up, we help the circulation. We might do a little bit of stretching and a little bit of activations. So let's say these uh, rotator cuff exercise with the bands or those uh, when you lift and push the arm back under the resistance. And... Then, you know, combina combination of different, um, you know, stretching, strengthening, and massage. So I use my massage gun to release the rotator cuff, shoulder itself. And then we obviously mix something else into it and we come back to it. So sometimes I would just implement a little bit of it into a training session for my client and then gradually start to do a little bit harder and, and, and more volume of these. So a little more resistance on the bands, a little bit deeper stretches and, and so on, and then spending more time doing it. And in fairness, the, the results have been great. And the main thing is just for people just to get going. With the knees, for example, if I have someone who has, uh, who have sore knees, 
I would always look at how's their balance and how hip stabilization when they walk, if their knee is collapsing inwards, uh, also test their flexibility and to see where which muscles they feel the tightest. If I use a massage or a massage gun, if I press on certain muscles, I want them to give me feedback which muscles are really, really painful. Because if they're painful, that's uh, also a reflection to the fact that the muscles are tight. And tightness equals weakness. And that also increases the sensitivity of the muscle. So your brain will let you know, your body will let you know that look after me. So we have that sort of approach many times in our society these days that if we have pain, we want to kill the pain and we don't really want to be going deep into you know, why it is happening. So that's actually a problem because you, know, you cannot just pretend that it doesn't hurt you and your body is trying to tell you something valuable that you can contemplate on and eventually figure out uh, what to do to improve it. And so with, with the knees part in particular, I always try to get a deep squat. So I ask people how to, how I, I tell them, go into the deep squat and I demonstrate, I show them. Uh, some, many times they would need first just to lift their heels and get some help with the hands on the floor and eventually getting some sort of cheated way of getting at least some sort of going down um, type of movement. And then I'm going to ask him, ask them where exactly do they feel the most tension. And that is actually the muscle groups that are the tightest in the whole area. So that's also a great indicator to know which muscles to uh, stretch. And then, you know, obviously strengthening with simple uh, single leg exercises like a single leg uh, squat and lunges and split squats as well. And of course, the normal squats as well. And so then I use a couple of different methods like ba banded knee. So just wrapping around the knee with a compression. And then usually one day go into a squat and I ask them, do you feel it in your knee or the pain is actually gone now when you have a support on your knee? So usually they say, no, it doesn't hurt me at all. It actually feels really good. So when you support the knee itself and you're still doing the, the squat-like movement with your knee, so if the problem and pain was in the knee, then why is it suddenly improved? You know, like your internal knee parts are still doing the same thing. But now we have a support on the knee, on the muscles, and the tendons are basically supported with that extra pressure from the bands. So th that gives me also quite a good indication that the problem might be with muscular, um, it might be muscular problem, and it's the tendons that are inflamed. And it wouldn't be a first time when somebody's like, oh yeah, I'll need a new knee but uh, like a surgery replacement of the joint, which I think a lot of doctors, they just sell it just to have extra bonuses, but they never try or rarely tr try. There are exceptions. I heard that. There are exceptions. But usually when you go to a doctor, he wants to do his job, something which pays his bills, something he's trained to do. So obviously surgeons want to cut. They want to basically do their job. They don't want to send their clients, their customers away and say, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, come back, come back. I have a surgery for you. No. So you see, sometimes I find <clears throat> that people don't understand. And I read a couple of books on the topic, so it's not just my opinion, but there's a lot of unnecessary surgeries where people being told that they need it, even though you know, many times it's just muscular imbalances. So I came to the conclusion that the first, the exercise and, and trying to fix these obvious problems, which will be the, the lack of strength, the extreme tension in certain muscles, which will hugely contribute to the inflammation of the tendons. And that might be 90% of most cases. It's different when somebody has, uh, have, somebody have, an injury from a sport where there was high impact or someone had an accident and they basically destroyed the joint or cartilage. Of course, in that case, the surgery can be really, really appropriate. But I'm talking about these dull pains starting to build up and become chronic problems. Many people don't realize how simply the exercise 
two, three weeks of a regime of strengthening, stretching and, and releasing tension with also some sort of nutritional improvements just to lower inflammation in general because everything in the body is connected. It's a one system that is connected. So if you are under stress or if you eat a lot of food that is inflammatory, you just adding extra inflammation to already inflamed parts of the body. So sometimes lowering inflammation uh, could be very, very beneficial on top of that. And also improving sleep because when we sleep, we regenerate. Another part of anti-inflammation would be to avoid trans fats and some different additives and a lot of chemical additives to the food, which don't have to be there. Also, I'll be looking at hydration. I'll be also adding some uh, fish oil or some sort of omega-3 oils just to, they are anti-inflammatory and we usually lack them in our diet. So when we have a huge imbalance between the omega-3, omega-6 and omega-9, we have a lot of omega-6. These are these plant-based oils that we being told are so good, but experts are saying that if we screw up that ratio in these omega-3, 6, and 9, and we have too much 6, it also induces some sort of inflammation in the body. So again, just to balance with the diet. All right, I, I hope this helped some of you and that you start to understand a little bit more. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Talk to you soon.